Sykes-Picot Agreement The Sykes-Picot Agreement was a 1916 secret treaty between the United Kingdom and France, with assent from the Russian Empire and the Kingdom of Italy, to define their mutually agreed spheres of influence and control in an eventual partition of the Ottoman Empire. The agreement was based on the premise that the Triple Entente would achieve success in defeating the Ottoman Empire during World War I and formed part of a series of secret agreements contemplating its partition. The primary negotiations leading to the agreement occurred between 23 November 1915 and 3 January 1916, on which date the British and French diplomats Mark Sykes and Frank or Georges Picot initialed an agreed memorandum. The agreement was ratified by their respective governments on 9 and 16 May 1916. The agreement effectively divided the Ottoman provinces outside the Arabian Peninsula into areas of British and French control and influence. The British and French controlled countries were divided by the Sykes-Picot line. The agreement allocated to the UK control of what is today southern Israel and Palestine, Jordan and southern Iraq, and an additional small area that included the ports of Haifa and Acre to allow access to the Mediterranean. France was to control southeastern Turkey, northern Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. As a result of the included Sezanov Paleologue Agreement, Russia was to get western Armenia in addition to Constantinople and the Turkish Straits already promised under the 1915 Constantinople Agreement. Italy assented to the agreement in 1917 via the Agreement of St. Jean de Maurienne and received southern Anatolia. The Palestine region, with a smaller area than the later mandatory Palestine, was to fall under an international administration. The agreement was initially used directly as the basis for the 1918 Anglo-French modus vivendi, which provided a framework for the occupied enemy territory administration in the Levant. More broadly, it was to lead, indirectly, to the subsequent partitioning of the Ottoman Empire following Ottoman defeat in 1918. Shortly after the war, the French ceded Palestine and Mosul to the British. Mandates in the Levant and Mesopotamia were assigned at the April 1920 San Remo Conference following the Sykes-Picot framework. The British mandate for Palestine ran until 1948. The British mandate for Mesopotamia was to be replaced by a similar treaty with mandatory Iraq, and the French mandate for Syria and the Lebanon lasted until 1946. The Anatolian parts of the agreement were assigned by the August 1920 Treaty of Severs. However, these ambitions were thwarted by the 1919-23 Turkish War of Independence and the subsequent Treaty of Lawson. The agreement is seen by many as a turning point in Western and Arab relations. It negated the UK promises to Arabs regarding a national Arab homeland in the area of Greater Syria in exchange for supporting the British against the Ottoman Empire. The agreement, along with others, was made public by the Bolsheviks in Moscow on 23 November 1917 and repeated in the British Guardian on 26 November 1917 such that the British were embarrassed, the Arabs dismayed, and the Turks delighted. The agreement's legacy has led to much resentment in the region, among Arabs in particular, but also among Kurds, who were denied an independent state. Motivation and Negotiations Prior Agreements with Russia and Italy March-April 1915 In the Constantinople Agreement of 18 March 1915, Following the start of naval operations in the run-up to the Gallipoli campaign, the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Sazanov, wrote to the French and UK ambassadors and staked a claim to Constantinople and the Dardanelles. In a series of diplomatic exchanges over five weeks, the UK and France both agreed, while putting forward their own claims to an increased sphere of influence in Iran in the case of the UK, and to an annexation of Syria including Palestine and Cilicia for France. The UK and French claims were both agreed, all sides also agreeing that the exact governance of the holy places was to be left for later settlement. Were it not for the Russian revolutions of 1917, Constantinople and the Straits could have been given to Russia upon the Allied victory. This agreement and the Sykes-Picot agreement were complementary 
as France and Britain first had to satisfy Russia. In the Treaty of London of 26 April 1915, Article 9 included commitments regarding Italian participation in any partitioning of the Ottoman Empire. The article stated if France, Great Britain, and Russia occupy any territories in Turkey and Asia during the course of the war, the Mediterranean region bordering on the province of Adelio, within the limits indicated above, shall be reserved to Italy, who shall be entitled to occupy it. Prior agreement with the Arabs July 1915, March 1916. While Sykes and Picot were in negotiations, discussions were proceeding in parallel between Hussein bin Ali, Sharif of Mecca, and Lieutenant Colonel Sir Henry McMahon, British High Commissioner to Egypt, the McMahon Hussein correspondence. Their correspondence comprised ten letters exchanged from July 1915 to March 1916, in which the British government agreed to recognize Arab independence after the war in exchange for the Sharif of Mecca launching the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire. The area of Arab independence was defined to be bounded on the north by Mersina and Adana up to 37 degrees of latitude, on which degree fall Bayrajik, Urfa, Mardin, Midiat, Jerizet Ibn Uma, Amadia, up to the border of Persia, on the east by the borders of Persia, up to the Gulf of Basra, on the south by the Indian Ocean. Hassin's reply of 1 January to McMahon's 14 December 1915 was received at the Foreign Office, McMahon's cover stating, Satisfactory as it may be to note his general acceptance for the time being of the proposed relations of France with Arabia, his reference to the future of those relations adumbrates a source of trouble, which it will be wise not to ignore. I have on more than one occasion brought to the notice of His Majesty's government the deep antipathy with which the Arabs regard the prospect of French administration of any portion of Arab territory. In this lies considerable danger to our future relations with France, because difficult and even impossible, though it may be to convince France of her mistake, if we do not endeavor to do so, by warning her of the real state of Arab feeling, we may hereafter be accused of instigating or encouraging the opposition to the French, which the Arabs now threaten, and will assure after discussions Gray instructed that the French be informed of the situation, although Paul Camden did not take the agreement that seriously. Anglo-French Negotiations, October 1915, March 1916 on 21 October 1915, Gray met Cambin and suggested France appoint a representative to discuss the future borders of Syria as Britain wished to back the creation of an independent Arab state. At this point, Gray was faced with competing claims from the French and from Hassin, and the day before had sent a telegram to Cairo telling the High Commissioner to be as vague as possible in his next letter to the Sharif when discussing the Northwood. Syrian corner of the territory Hussein claimed and left McMahon with discretion in the matter as it is urgent and there is not time to discuss an agreement. The first meeting of the British Interdepartmental Committee headed by Sir Arthur Nicholson with Frank or George's Picot took place on 23 November 1915. Picot informed the Nicholson Committee that France claimed the possession of land starting from where the Taurus Mountains approached the sea in Cilicia following the Taurus Mountains and the mountains further east, so as to include Diyarbekir, Mosul, and Erbil, and then returning to Dare, Azor on the Euphrates, and from there southwards, along the desert border, finishing eventually at the Egyptian frontier. Picot, however, added that he was prepared to propose to the French government to throw Mosul into the Arab pool, if we did so in the case of Baghdad. A second meeting of the Nicholson Committee with Picot took place on 21 December 1915, wherein Picot said that he had obtained permission to agree to the towns of Aleppo, Hama, Homs, and Damascus being included in the Arab dominions to be administered by the Arabs. Although the French had scaled back their demands to some extent, the British also claimed to want to include Lebanon in the future Arab state, and this meeting also ended at an impasse. On Tuesday, 28 December, Mark Sykes informed Gilbert Clayton that he had been given the Picot negotiations. Sykes and Picot entered into almost daily private discussions over the six-day period. No documents survive from these discussions. On Monday, 3 January 1916, 
they agreed and initialed a joint memorandum containing what was to become known as the Sykes-Picot Agreement. They had agreed to compromise on the two primary areas of difference. They split the Mossel Velayet in two at the Little Zab River, with the French taking the northern part Mossel and Herbal, and the British taking the southern part Kirkuk and Suleimania, and Palestine was to be placed under an international administration, the form of which is to be decided upon after consultation with Russia. On 16 January, Sykes told the Foreign Office that he had spoken to Picot and that he thought Paris would be able to agree. An interdepartmental conference was convened by Nicholson on 21 January. Following the meeting, a final draft agreement was circulated to the Cabinet on 2 February. The War Committee considered it on the 3rd and finally at a meeting on the 4th between Bonner Law, Chamberlain, Lord Kitchener, and others it was decided that M. Picot may inform his government that the acceptance of the whole project would entail the abdication of considerable British interests, but provided that the cooperation of the Arabs is secured and that the Arabs fulfill the conditions and obtain the towns of Homs, Hama, Damascus, and Aleppo, the British government would not object to the arrangement. But, as the blue area extends so far eastwards and affects Russian interests, it would be absolutely essential that before anything was concluded, the consent of Russia was obtained. Pico was informed, and five days later, Cambon told Nicholson that the French government were in accord with the proposals concerning the Arab question. Later in February and March, Sykes and Picot acted as advisers to Sir George Buchanan and the French ambassador respectively during negotiations with Sazanov. Formal British, French and Russian agreements April-October 1916 Eventually, Russia having agreed on 26 April 1916, the final terms were sent by Paul Cambon, the French ambassador in London, to the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, Edward Gray, on 9 May 1916. The formal agreements between Britain, France, and Russia comprised the 11 letters below. In the chain of agreements between France, Russia, and Britain, the Russian claims were assented to first. France confirmed their agreement on 26 April and Britain on 23 May, with formal sanction on 23 October. The Anglo-French agreement was confirmed in an exchange of letters on 9 May and 16 May. Agreement with Italy April-August 1917 In a meeting in a railway car at St. Jean de Morian on 19 April 1917, a tentative agreement was reached between British and French Prime Ministers David Lloyd George and Alexander Ribot and the Italian Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Paolo Bosoli and Sidney Sonino, to settle the Italian interest in the Ottoman Empire. The agreement was needed by the Allies to secure the position of Italian forces in the Middle East. The goal was to balance the military power drops at the Middle Eastern theater of World War I as Russian Tsarist forces were pulling out of the Caucasus campaign, even though they were replaced with what would be named as First Republic of Armenia forces. It was clear to the Italians that the area allotted to them may not be easily given up by the Turkish Empire, such that the British Prime Minister proposed a vague formula for post-war adjustment should the actual post-war allocation not appear to be balanced. The agreement was drafted and negotiated by the country's diplomats over the coming months and signed by the Allies between 18 August and 26 September 1917. Russia was not represented in this agreement, as the Tsarist regime was in the midst of a revolution. The lack of Russian consent to the St. Jean de Maurienne Agreement was subsequently used by the British at the 1919 Paris Peace Conference to invalidate it a position that greatly incensed the Italian government. The Brown Zone and the Imperial Interest Economic Aspects The Agreement in Practice Syria, Palestine and the Arabs Asquith Government 1916 Hassin's letter of 18 February 1916 appealed to McMahon for £50,000 in gold plus weapons, ammunition, and, and food claiming that Faisal was awaiting the arrival of not less than 100,000 people for the planned revolt, and McMahon's reply of 10 March 1916 confirmed the British agreement to the requests out.
In April and May there were discussions initiated by Sykes as to the merits of a meeting to include Picot and the Arabs to mesh the desiderata of both sides. At the same time, logistics in relation to the promised revolt were being dealt with, and there was a rising level of impatience for action to be taken by Hassim. Finally, at the end of April, McMahon was advised of the terms of sykes picot and he and Gray agreed that these would not be disclosed to the Arabs. The Arab revolt was officially initiated by Hassin at Mecca on 10 June 1916, although his sons Ali and Faisal had already initiated operations at Medina starting on 5 June. The timing had been brought forward by Hassin, and according to Cairo, neither he nor we were at all ready in early June 1916 and it was only with the greatest of difficulty that a minimum of sufficient assistance in material could be scraped together to ensure initial success. Colonel Edouard Bremond was dispatched to Arabia in September 1916 as head of the French military mission to the Arabs. According to Cairo, Bremond was intent on containing the revolt so that the Arabs might not in any way threaten French interests in Syria. These concerns were not taken up in London, British-French cooperation was thought paramount, and Cairo made aware of that. Wingate was informed in late November that it would seem desirable to impress upon your subordinates the need for the most loyal cooperation with the French whom His Majesty's government do not suspect of ulterior designs in the Hyde. Lloyd George had wanted to make the destruction of the Ottoman Empire a major British war aim, and two days after taking office told Robertson that he wanted a major victory, preferably the capture of Jerusalem, to impress British public opinion. The EF were, at the time, in defensive mode at a line on the eastern edge of the Sinai at El Arish and 15 miles from the borders of Ottoman Palestine. Lloyd George at once consulted his war cabinet about a further campaign into Palestine when El Arish had been secured. Pressure from Lloyd George over the reservations of Chief of the General Staff resulted in the capture of Rafa, and the arrival of British forces at the borders of the Ottoman Empire. Lloyd George Government 1917 Onwards Lloyd George set up a new small war cabinet initially comprising Lords Curzon and Milner, Bonner Law, Arthur Henderson and himself, Hankey became the secretary with Sykes, Ormsby Gore and Amory as assistants. Although Arthur Balfour replaced Gray as foreign secretary, his exclusion from the war cabinet and the activist stance of its members weakened his influence over foreign policy. The French chose Picot as French High Commissioner for the soon-to-be-occupied territory of Syria and Palestine. The British appointed Sykes as chief political officer to the Egyptian Expeditionary Force. On 3 April 1917, Sykes met with Lloyd George, Curzon, and Hankey to receive his instructions in this regard namely to keep the French on side while pressing for a British Palestine. First Sykes in early May and then Picot, and Sykes together visited the Hedges later, in May to discuss the agreement with Faisal and Hassin. Hassin was persuaded to agree to a formula to the effect that the French would pursue the same policy in Syria as the British in Baghdad, since Hassin believed that Baghdad would be part of the Arab state that had eventually satisfied him. Later reports from participants expressed doubts about the precise nature of the discussions and the degree to which Hassin had really been informed as to the terms of sykes picot Italy's participation in the war, governed by the Treaty of London, eventually led to the agreement of St. Jean de Maurienne in April 1917. At this conference, Lloyd George had raised the question of a British protectorate of Palestine and the idea had been very coldly received by the French and the Italians. The War Cabinet, reviewing this conference on 25 April, inclined to the view that sooner or later the sykes picot agreement might have to be reconsidered. No action should be taken at present in this matter. In between the meetings with Hassim, Sykes had informed London that the sooner French military mission is removed from Hedges the better, and then Lord Bertie was instructed to request the same from the French on the grounds that the mission was hostile to the Arab cause and wit. After the French response to this, on 31 May 1917, William Ormsby Gore wrote, The British government, in authorizing the letters dispatched 
to King Hassin Sharif of Mecca before the outbreak of the revolt by Sir Henry McMahon, would seem to raise a doubt as to whether our pledges to King Hassin as head of the Arab nation are consistent with French intentions to make not only Syria but Upper Mesopotamia and other Tunis. If our support of King Hassin and the other Arabian leaders of less distinguished origin and prestige means anything, it means that we are prepared to recognize the full sovereign independence of the Arabs of Arabia and Syria. It would seem time to acquaint the French government with our detailed pledges to King Hassin, and to make it clear to the latter whether he or someone else is to be the ruler of Damascus, which is the one possible capital for an Arab state, which could command the obedience of the other Arabian emirs. In a further sign of British discontent with sykes picot in August, Sykes penned a memorandum on the Asia Minor Agreement that was tantamount to advocating its renegotiation else, that it be made clear to the French that they make good. After many discussions, Sykes was directed to conclude with Picot an agreement or supplement. However, by the end of the year, the agreement had yet to be ratified by the French government. The Balfour Declaration, along with its potential claim in Palestine, was in the meantime issued on 2 November and the British entered Jerusalem on 9 December, with a Lenby on foot two days later accompanied by representatives of the French and Italian detachments. After Public Disclosure 1917-18 Russian claims in the Ottoman Empire were denied following the Bolshevik Revolution, and the Bolsheviks released a copy of the sykes picot Agreement, as well as other treaties. They revealed full texts in Izvestia and Pravda on 23 November 1917. Subsequently, the Manchester Guardian printed the texts on 26 November 1917. That caused great embarrassment to the Allies and growing distrust between them and the Arabs. Earlier, in April, the Zionists had confirmed the details of the agreement with the British government. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson had rejected all secret agreements made between the Allies and promoted open diplomacy as well as ideas about self-determination. On 22 November 1917, Leon Trotsky addressed a note to the ambassadors at Petrograd containing proposals for a truce and a democratic peace without annexation and without indemnities based on the principle of the independence of nations and of their right to determine the nature of their own development themselves. Peace negotiations with the Quadruple Alliance Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Turkey started at Brest-Litovsk one month later. On behalf of the Quadruple Alliance, Count Chernin replied on 25 December that the question of state allegiance of national groups which possess no state independence should be solved by every state with its peoples independently in a constitutional manner, and that the right of minorities forms an essential component part of the constitutional right of peoples to self-determination. In his turn, Lloyd George delivered a speech on war aims on 5 January, including references to the right of self-determination and consent of the governed as well as to secret treaties and the changed circumstances regarding them. Three days later, Wilson weighed in with his 14 points, the twelfth being that the Turkish portions of the present Ottoman Empire should be assured a secure sovereignty, but the other nationalities which are now under Turkish rule should be assured an undoubted security of life and an absolutely unmolested opportunity of autonomous development. On 23 December 1917, Sykes, who had been sent to France in mid-December to see what was happening, with the project arrangement and a representative of the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs had delivered public addresses to the Central Syrian Congress in Paris, including liberated Jerusalem. Sykes had stated that the accomplished fact of the independence of the Hedges rendered it almost impossible that an effective and real autonomy should be refused to Syria. However, the minutes also record that the Syrian Arabs in Egypt were not happy with developments and absent a clearer less ambiguous statement in regard to the future of Syria and Mesopotamia than the Allies as well as the King of the Hejaz would lose much Arab support. Sykes was the author of the Hogarth Message, a secret January 1918 message to Hussein following his request for an explanation of the Balfour Declaration, and the Bassett letter was a letter also secret dated 8 February. The failure of the project arrangement reflected poorly on Sykes and following on from the doubts about his explanations of Sykes-Picot, 
to Hassin the previous year, weakened his credibility on Middle Eastern affairs throughout 1918. Still at his own request, now acting advisor on Arabian and Palestine affairs, at the Foreign Office, he continued his criticism of sykes picot minuting on 16 February. On 28 March 1918, the first meeting of the newly formed Eastern Committee was held, chaired by Curzon. In May, Clayton told Balfour that Picot had, in response to a suggestion that the agreement was moot, allowed that considerable revision was required in view of changes that had taken place in the situation since agreement was drawn up, but nevertheless considered that agreement holds, at any rate principle. The British issued the Declaration to the Seven on 16 June, the first British pronouncement to the Arabs advancing the principle of national self-determination. On 30 September 1918, supporters of the Arab revolt in Damascus declared a government loyal to the Sharif of Mecca. He had been declared King of the Arabs by a handful of religious leaders and other notables in Mecca. The Arab and British armies entered Damascus on 1 October 1918, and on 3 October 1918 Ali Ridi al-Rikabai was appointed military governor of occupied enemy territory administration east. Faisal entered Damascus on 4 October and appointed Rikabai chief of the Council of Directors, i.e. Prime Minister of Syria. On 5 October, with the permission of General Alembi, Faisal announced the establishment of a fully and absolutely independent Arab constitutional government. Faisal announced it would be an Arab government based on justice and equality for all Arabs regardless of religion. The Anglo-French Declaration of November 1918 pledged that Great Britain and France would assist in the establishment of indigenous governments and administrations in Syria and Mesopotamia by setting up of national. The French had reluctantly agreed to issue the declaration at the insistence of the British. Minutes of a British War Cabinet meeting reveal that the British had cited the laws of conquest and military occupation to avoid sharing the administration with the French under a civilian regime. The British stressed that the terms of the Anglo-French Declaration had superseded the Sykes-Picot Agreement in order to justify fresh negotiations over the allocation of the territories of Syria, Mesopotamia, and Palestine. George Curzon said the great powers were still committed to the Reglement Organate Agreement which concerned governance and non-intervention in the affairs of the Maronite, Orthodox, Christian, Druze, and Muslim communities regarding the Beirut Vilayet of June 1861 and September 1864, and added that the rights granted to France in what is today modern Mosul and Palestine modification. On 30 October, the Ottoman Empire had signed the Armistice of Mudros. On 2 November, the British occupied the Mosul Vilayet, which led to the territorial dispute known as the Mosul Question. At the French Embassy in London on Sunday, 1 December, David Lloyd George and Clemenceau had a private and undocumented meeting where the latter surrendered French rights to Mosul, the city of Mosul, and south to the Little Zab and to Palestine that had been given by the sykes picot Agreement. Although Lloyd George and others have suggested that nothing was given in return, according to Ian Rutledge and James Barr, Lloyd George promised at least one or even all of support for French claims on the Ruhr, that when oil production in Mosul began, France would receive a share and that sykes picot obligation would be maintained as regards Syria. Paris Peace Conference 1919-20 Iraq and the Persian Gulf in November 1914, the British had occupied Basra. According to the report of the de Bunsen Committee, British interests in Mesopotamia were defined by the need to protect the western flank of India and protect commercial interests, including oil. The British also became concerned about the Berlin-Baghdad Railway. Although never ratified, the British had also initialed the anglo ottoman Convention of 1913. As part of the Mesopotamian campaign on 11 March 1917, the British entered Baghdad. The Armistice of Mudros was signed on 30 October 1918, although the British continued their advance, entering Mosul on 2 November. Following the award of the British Mandate of Mesopotamia at San Remo, 
the British were faced with an Iraqi revolt against the British from July until February 1921, as well as a Kurdish revolt in northern Iraq. Following the Cairo conference, it was decided that Faisal should be installed as ruler in mandatory Iraq. Kurds and Assyrians As originally cast, sykes picot allocated part of northern Kurdistan and a substantial part of the Mosul Vilayet, including the city of Mosul, to France in area B, Russia obtained Bitlis, and then in northern Kurdistan the contemplated Arab state included Kurds in its eastern limit split between A and B areas. Pullman says there were around 2.5 million Kurds in Turkey, mainly in the mountain region called Kurdistan. Serif Pasha, known as Sharif Pasha, presented a memorandum on the claims of the Kurd people to the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, and the suppressed report of the King Crane Commission also recommended a form of autonomy e, with the divide between the Euphrates and the Tigris as the western boundary, and the Persian frontier as the eastern boundary. The Russians gave up territorial claims following the Bolshevik Revolution, and at the San Remo Conference. The French were awarded the French mandate of Syria and the English the British mandate of Mesopotamia. The subsequent Treaty of Severs potentially provided for a Kurdish territory subject to a referendum and League of Nations sanction within a year of the treaty. However, the Turkish War of Independence led to the treaty being superseded by the Treaty of Lawson, in which there was no provision for a Kurdish state. The end result was that the Kurds, along with their Assyrian neighbors, were divided between Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran. Conflicting Promises and Consequences Many sources contend that Sykes-Picot conflicted with the Hussein McMahon correspondence of 1915-1916, and that the publication of the agreement in November 1917 caused the resignation of Sir. There were several points of difference the most obvious being Iraq placed in the British Red Area and less obviously the idea that British and French advisers would be in control of the area designated as being for an Arab state. Lastly, while the correspondence made no mention of Palestine, Haifa and Acre were to be British and the Brown Area, a reduced Palestine internationalized. Modern Politics Leading up to the centenary of sykes picot in 2016, great interest was generated among the media and academia concerning the long-term effects of the agreement. The agreement is frequently cited as having created artificial borders in the Middle East without any regard to ethnic or sectarian characteristics, which has resulted in endless conflict. The extent to which sykes pico actually shaped the borders of the modern Middle East is disputed. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Isil claimed one of the goals of its insurgency is to reverse the effects of the sykes picot Agreement for the purpose of building a united Islamic State. This is not the first border we will break. We will break other borders of jihadist from the Isil warned in a video titled End of sykes picot Isil's former leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, in a July 2014 speech at the Great Mosque of al Nuri in Mosul, vowed that this blessed advance will not stop until we hit the last nail in the coffin of the sykes picot conspiracy. Former French Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin presented a similar geopolitical analysis in an editorial contribution for the French newspaper Le Monde.